but years and years. The science behind unboiling an egg has been linked to concocting a key anaesthetic that could be used in remote places. Professor Colin Rustin and his team from Flinders University won the prestigious Ig Nobel Prize for creating the Vortex fluid device which can unravel proteins or unboil an egg. Professor Rustin explains how it's done and what this could mean for medicine. Hi Bridget, you can't do it at home unless you had one of these uh, what we call Vortex fluidic devices. We just affectionately called it the, the VFD. Um, that's what you need, and that's how, that's how you do it. So, so, so how you unboil the egg is, when you cook an egg, um, you boil it, the egg white goes white. It's a very unconventional form of cooking because you're not actually breaking what we call chemical bonds. You're changing the way this bit of spaghetti coils, that is the protein, and because it's what we call misfolded, it, it forms a gel. So if you can work out a way of putting some sort of energy, mechanical energy back into to refold correctly, orientate this bit of spaghetti, the, the protein, then you've unboiled an egg. Okay, and so you're doing this in a device, like a, a thermos sort of flask. Uh, no, it's a it's a it's a device. It's a it's a it's a very small glass tube which is spun at ridiculously high speeds. How, how did and you come up with this device? Well, there's two two eureka stories here. One one is the actual thinking of the device, and the other is actually meeting with a, a colleague at University of California, Irvine, where we came up within a ten minute conversation. It was a chance meeting that, yes, we're going to do this refolding of proteins which led to the uh, unboiling of the egg. But I have to say, we didn't start out to unboil the egg. That was a, that was a consequence of that discovery. So that was, that was a chance meeting, a 10-minute conversation, would you believe, um, end of 2012. It was the meeting of like minds, and we knew within 10 minutes what we had to do. But if you go back, the actual invention of the vortex fluidic device um, I put together on a flight from LA to Sydney in March 2010 where I was trying to solve a particular uh, problem um, and you have 15 hours to, to burn up and during that 15 hours I devised the plans and had one of these devices built and as they say the rest is history. We've, wow. we've well, everyone un else is unboiled the, the egg. Movie. Yeah. Um, uh, and so how does this device work with lidocaine, which is the, the oh, numbing okay, agent? Oh, okay, this is, this, is, yeah. Yeah, this, this is another application of the, uh, of the VFD. So this is making a small molecule, uh, which is a, a pharmaceutical, it's an anaesthetic. So, so in this small device, no bigger than a, the, than a coffee cup, you can, you can make uh, in continuous flow, so you have liquids being directed to the bottom of this rapidly rotating tube and, 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 and as the liquids whirl up and come out the top you can get all these chemical transformations to take place so that you have this uh, anaesthetic lidocaine actually exiting at the top of the tube. Now the significance of that is that you can make these molecules quickly, you can make them without generating as much waste because for most pharmaceuticals um, if you think of about a kilogram of a pharmaceutical, typically there's a half a tonne of waste sitting on the planet somewhere uh, that went into making these. So, so this technology is going to simplify it, it's going to reduce the amount of waste we generate, um, it's safer because you can get what we call the heat transferring away so you don't get uh, the possibility of exothermic explosive reactions and you use far less energy. And so, 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 so and sorry, so where could it be, be used in sort of, it's quite a small device in remote well, locations creating an anaesthetic for well, injured well, people injured well, in war? You could do that, but, but, but I guess the, the biggest thing is that you can, you can make um, these pharmaceutical drugs uh, quickly um, in a fraction of the time. The capital outlay for a company to make these is very, very small relative to the, it's, it's, it's a coffee cup a different shape but this, that sort of volume versus traditional chemical processing you would have a big container you do a reaction then you transfer it into another container do another reaction then you have to purify everything we simplify all that so it's, so it's cheaper as well so so in a sense it's very attractive to industry professor colin rustin thank you very much for joining us thank you bridget it's called dismal